All right, let's finish up the material for exam two. So this will be the last lecture for the week. So now we want to talk about confidence intervals uh, for the mean when our samples are smaller. So in this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about something called the T distribution. This is different than the normal distribution. And we're going to construct confidence intervals when the sample size is less than 30, but the population is normally distributed and this population standard deviation is unknown. Okay. So when the population standard deviation is unknown, the sample size is less than 30, and the random variable x is approximately normally distributed. So we know that this random variable is normally distributed. Then it's gonna, we're going to say it follows what's called a t-distribution. Do not worry about this formula. I'm just giving it to you so you know how a t is calculated. So it should look a little bit similar to a z-score, where you see our sample mean minus our population mean divided by some standard error. All right, and you'll often see critical values of T denoted by uh, T with a little subscript of C. Uh, don't worry too much about this as we'll be primarily working through Excel, but it'll be very similar to Z. All right, Z's and T's similar, it's just that Z's are from a normal distribution, whereas these little T's come from a T distribution. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about the properties of the T distribution. The t-distribution is bell-shaped and symmetric about the mean. And the t-distribution is actually a family of curves, each determined by a parameter called the degrees of freedom. Right? What the heck's a degree of freedom? The degrees of freedom are the number of free choices left after a sample statistic, uh, such as x-bar. I'm not sure how that got down there, but such as the sample average is calculated. When you use a t-distribution to estimate a population mean, the degrees of freedoms are always equal to one less than the sample size. So when, when you do need the degrees of freedom, just know you're taking one off of the overall sample size. All right, just like with our normal distribution, the total area under a t-curve is 1 or 100%. The mean, median, and mode of the t-distribution are all equal to zero right there in the middle. So it's very similar uh, to a normal distribution. As the degrees of freedom increase, the t-distribution approaches the normal distribution. So after 30 degrees of freedom, the t-distribution is very close to the standard normal z-distribution. This is why we're only going to be using the t-distribution when our sample size is smaller than 30. Okay, so here we see degrees of freedom of 2. All right, and then there you see how it's approaching more of a normal distribution as the degrees of freedom increase. All right, the tails in the t distribution are what we call thicker than those in the standard normal distribution, meaning uh, when the degrees of freedom are small, we're more likely to have um, events happen far further out from the mean. All right, so let's just go through how we can find critical values of t. So let's find the critical value T um, subscript C for a 95% confidence level when the sample size is 15. Okay, so when we want to uh, use, uh, how do I want to say this? When we want to get the critical values of T, it's going to be very similar to what we did with the normal distribution. You guys know we used norm S env to get the critical Z's. And so for critical T's, we're going to use. Uh, T env, all right, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to actually pull the Excel a little bit this way. So let's think about this. So equals T dot, so I, I see T dot env come up, okay, and I'm just going to click on it, all right, and notice here, what is it telling me? It's telling me that Excel is looking for a probability and the degrees of freedom. Okay, so our degrees of freedom is one less than our sample size, so you can see where I've calculated it here in, uh, in PowerPoint as 14. 
all right? And what is the probability? Well, the probability is going to be 1 minus our confidence level and then half of it. So 1 half times 1 minus our confidence level. All right, so our confidence level is 95%. So 95% is what lies between our positive and negative critical T value. That means there's point or 2.5% in one tail and 2.5% in the other tail. So I have 0.025 is the area to the left of the negative T. And our degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size, or 14. And when I calculate this, I'm getting negative 2.145. All right. And again, we know that we're getting the positive and the negative. So let's look at a picture of what we just did. Okay, so here, 95%, again, is what lies between our critical T's, okay? And that means that there is, oops, that means that there's 0.025 here and 0.025 in the left tail, okay? And so that's why we used T dot N with 0.025 and our degrees of freedom of 14. All right, what about a confidence interval? Well, a confidence interval for the population mean mu is going to look exactly what we did before. The only difference is going to be how we're calculating our area, our, our error. Okay, we are not going to use this formula. I'm simply giving it to you so that you have an idea of uh, how it's calculated by hand. Again, we'll be using a function in Excel. Okay, the probability that the confidence interval contains mu is C. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk about confidence intervals and t-distributions and what you are going to be doing in Excel. So again, if I give you raw data, okay, so a whole bunch of data, then the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to calculate the average. Remember in Excel, this is where you type equals average. This is terrible writing with this little pen. All right, and you'll grab all your data, okay? And you'll also need your sample standard deviation. So this is where you do equals STDEV, that is DEV dot S, and you will grab all your data. All right, uh, we can identify the degrees of freedom, although it's not really critical uh, for our formula. All we really need. Uh, in Excel are these three numbers right here. And we'll calculate our margin of error using instead of confidence.norm, we'll use confidence.t. And our inputs are all very similar. One minus our confidence level, our standard deviation, and our sample size. And then we'll take that uh, margin of error and we'll subtract it from our point estimate or our sample average and we'll also add it to our sample average to get our actual confidence interval. So let's actually go through a problem here and I'm going to move out of Excel, uh, move out of PowerPoint for a second, okay? So what do we have? We know that we're looking for n, we're looking for our sample average, we are looking for our standard deviation, okay? So what do we have in the problem? We randomly select 16 coffee shops. That's our N. That's our sample size. The sample mean temperature all right, of the coffee is going to be 162 degrees with a sample standard deviation of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so right away I'm able to get my sample size of 16, my sample average of 162, and my sample standard deviation of 10. We want to find the 95% confidence interval for the population mean temperature. Assume that temperatures are approximately normally distributed. If we did not see this statement right here, we would, and let me highlight that. Ooh, Lord. My heavens. 
All right. So if we did not have that that statement of assuming temperatures are normally distributed, we would not be able to move further. We have to see that in order to work the problem. Okay. So yes, we will use the t distribution because the sample size is less than 30. There is no population standard deviation, but we know that our random variable temperature is normally distributed. Okay, so let's construct our confidence interval. Oh, and our confidence is 0.95. Okay, all right. You will see when we start uh, typing in the formula, uh, and let me just call this um, margin of error. Okay, so when I start typing this equals confidence.t, Notice this first word says alpha, okay? Alpha is the statistic word for one minus the confidence, okay? And I can certainly go ahead and calculate that. Alpha is gonna be our word for one minus the confidence, okay? So I can do equal one minus the confidence level, and I get 0.05, okay? So our margin of error, all right, is going to be equals Again, we're going to use confidence.t. All right, our alpha is 0.05. Our standard deviation is 10. And our sample size is 16 coffee shops. And I get a margin of error of 5.32. All right, now my left endpoint is going to be x bar minus e. And my right endpoint is going to be x bar plus the error. Okay, so my left endpoint will be my sample average minus my margin of error. And my right endpoint will be my sample average plus, ooh, Lord, my margin of error. And just following here on the PowerPoint, all right, again, what did we do? All right, we had, we used uh, confidence.t to get our margin of error. What did we put in? We put in alpha, or one minus the confidence level, the standard deviation, and the sample size. Then from this answer of 5.32, all right, I added it and subtracted it to my point estimate of the sample average to get my confidence interval of 156.7 degrees to 167.3 degrees. Okay, and so with 95% confidence, we can say that the population mean temperature of coffee sold is between 156.7 degrees Fahrenheit and 167.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, be careful with your interpretation. All right, we're not saying there's a 95% probability that mu is in there. We're saying we're 95% confident that mu, the mean, t the population mean temperature is between these two endpoints. Okay, so when are you going to use a normal or t-distribution? This is something you're going to have to ask yourself on the exam because the problems will be mixed up. First, is the sample size greater than or equal to 30? If you say yes, then you use the normal distribution or confidence.norm. If you say no, then you need to ask yourself, well, is the population itself normally distributed? So is that random variable coming from a normal distribution? Like with the example we just did with coffee, it told us it was coming from a normal distribution. All right, if, if no, then we're done with the problem. There's nothing we can do. We can't use either distribution. If yes, then you ask yourself, do I know the population standard deviation? If yes, then again, use the normal distribution or confidence.norm. 
If no, then use confidence.t for the t distribution. All right, so let's look at an example. You randomly select 25 newly constructed houses. The sample mean construction cost is 181,000 and the population standard deviation is 28,000. Assuming construction costs are normally distributed, should you use the normal distribution, the T distribution, or neither to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean construction cost? Okay, so let's go back to our flowchart. Do we have a sample size greater than or equal to 30? Well, it appears that the sample size here is 25. Okay, so we're not bigger than 30. Okay, so we would say no, all right, then we ask ourselves, is the population normally distributed or approximately normal? Let's see, we were reading our problem and we notice it says, assuming construction costs are normally distributed. Okay, so we have that, then we can say, we're not bigger than 30, we're at 25. We are approximately normal. Is the standard deviation known for the population? Is sigma known? Do we know the population standard deviation? Again, we go back to our problem and we read the population standard deviation is 28,000. All right, this tells us that we know sigma. Okay, so we're at 25. Construction costs are normally distributed. We know sigma, it's 28,000. So we're gonna use the normal distribution or confidence.norm. All right, and so that's how we would construct this confidence interval. Okay, let's just go ahead and do it right quick. Okay, so we have our sample mean is 181,000. All right, our population standard deviation is 28,000. All right, our confidence is 0.95. That means, oh, and our sample size n is 25, okay? All right, so what is alpha going to be? Alpha is, again, this is going to be 1 minus the confidence. All right, so this is going to be 1 minus 0.95 or 0.05. All right, so now I'm going to use confidence.norm. All right, and this is going to give me my error. So this equals confidence.norm. All right, my alpha is 0.05, my standard deviation is 28,000, and my sample size is 25, and I get an error of almost $11,000. All right, so my left endpoint, again, is X bar minus the error. My right endpoint is X bar plus the error. All right, so my left endpoint is going to be my sample average minus the error. And my right endpoint is going to be my sample mean plus the error. Okay, and I can go ahead and make these dollars. All right, and so with 95% confidence, we can say that the population mean of construction costs for new homes is between $170,024 and $191,975.